Setting up and producing quality videos seems to cost a lot. But despite the advancement of technology, there are still ways for you to afford video production studio equipment without breaking the bank. Here are the things you need to minimize your video marketing costs when setting up your own studio. If you like what you see on this video and others, please hit the subscribe button along with the notifications bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming posts. Also, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hi, I'm Matt with Mimic Digital Marketing. Building an affordable video production studio doesn't need to empty your bank account. Before I continue, let me be completely honest. When you begin developing your video production studio, it will require to purchase some items. Although everyone does not have the same goals of developing a video production studio for the purpose for profit, there is a way to get it done without exhausting all of your resources. In fact, there are methods that can actually use the majority of the things that are already on your disposal. Let's begin with the obvious, a place to shoot your videos. If you plan to do explainer videos or videos that include some type of articulation about a product, service, or method, you want a place that won't be distracting. An empty room, your home office, or even a garage will all work well as a studio. If the focus of your video is to speak directly to your audience, you won't be able to do that in a distracting workspace. The beauty of indoor studios is that once your studio is set, you can just leave it as it is for the next shoot. No need to break it down and set it up again. Once it's there, it's there. Of course, having an indoor studio has its own challenges like soundproofing, lighting, and a slew of other things. But when you want a work-free, consistent studio ready to go, then think of an indoor studio as your option. Now that we have a place to shoot, the next thing is what do we want to shoot with? Okay, I know what you're thinking. A camera is going to cost me an arm and a leg. There's no way I can afford a camera to shoot my videos. If you're like me and have spent numerous hours surfing through YouTube, you can relate that not all videos are made the same. You don't expect that a DIY explainer video will have the same quality of something like a music video or a movie trailer. What's more important is the substance of your video. For the most part, if the substance of your video is compelling, people will most likely look past a grainy, low-resolution video purely for the content in it. But that being said, a powerful tool that you can use to shoot your videos is probably in your pocket. Yes, I mean your smartphone. Now let's be clear, chances are the videos that your smartphone will capture won't win you any cinematic awards, but for the purpose of publishing video content, it's perfect. Not to mention the ultra portability of a smartphone makes it ideal when you need to take your show on the road. If you have a smartphone made after 2015, chances are you can shoot 1080p videos with relative ease, especially if your videos are mostly talking to the camera from a stationary position. That will be more than enough for now. Just make sure to shoot with your rear camera. Front-facing cameras tend to be far inferior when it comes to editing and post-processing. If you're in the market to swap out that phone you currently have for something a little more practical for your video shooting needs, you might want to check out Swappa for some solid used phones. The selection and prices are perfect if you're on a budget. Let's say you've got a little cash and you think that an actual camera is something you want to make an investment into. Obviously, this is all dependent on the type of videos you will be shooting. It goes without saying, if you're a travel vlogger, chances are you might not want to invest in something like a 1080p webcam. Now that we have a place to shoot and narrow down what type of camera we're going to shoot with, we'll need to figure out where to put the camera. The options again are all dependent on the type of videos you'll be shooting. It will be absolutely silly to buy a 3-axis gimbal stabilizer for a review video. What I'm going to do is break down some free options as well as some DIY options for the basic stationary videos before I discuss other types of videos and stabilizing solutions. If at this point you've chosen the option to use a 1080p webcam for explainer videos or review videos, then you can simply mount your web camera on top of your laptop or computer. Since you won't be moving too much, your webcam will sit perfectly atop your device. For everything else, you will need some type of stand, tripod to keep your smartphone or camera from moving unexpectedly during recording. Most cameras will have a flat bottom, so if you choose to record your videos sitting down, Laying it on a flat surface will do the trick. If you need to have a higher vantage point, stacking a few books on top of each other will help get you that perfect angle. The items you'll need for a more elaborate stand video is dependent on what you have at your disposal. If you're shooting indoors, for example, a shelf, bookcase, 
or any person willing to hold your camera should serve you well. Shooting outdoors can be a little tricky if you don't really have much outdoor furniture to play around with. It's generally uncommon to have a jungle gym in your backyard, but if you do, great. Otherwise, the buddy system is your best bet to keep your costs next to nothing. When we talk about tripods and steady cams, there are a slew of DIY options that can help get you the shot you need. Although some of these DIY options come with an assembly process, others require little to no effort at all. When it comes to DIY options for your smartphone, the possibilities are literally just limited to your imagination. If you were to Google smartphone stands in your search bar, you will get literally thousands, if not millions of results. Luckily, we've saved you the trouble and picked out the most practical and affordable options for your video production studio. CNET published a blog about some nifty DIY smartphone stands. Now, some of them seem great, but impractical for what we'll be using them for. The idea is that you shoot your video in landscape mode, so DIY stands that have your phone in portrait mode are out. My favorite is the coffee sleeve stand simply because it's a free item that comes with your coffee if you need your Starbucks fix. Lifehacker published a clever use of a $1 plate stand that can be easily used for your video production studio. Check it out here. Now if you're more of a hands-on type of person, American Hackers has a video you can check out that walks you through the DIY camera stands build from everyday items you might have around your home. DIY stands and tripods for cameras really come down to the size of your camera. Obviously a DSLR will have some weight to it and the last thing you want to do is drop your camera due to a faulty makeshift tripod. If you're planning on a DIY stand or tripod, it will require lots of hands-on work. Parts and assembly are generally simple given that you have the necessary tools laying around your home. For this, it will require some beans or rice and a bag. A Ziploc bag is optional. Indoors is great if you have a nearby shelf or standing furniture where you can place the bag outdoors. However, will be a little trickier if there isn't anything to prop your bag and camera onto. This is the end of part one. Please click to the next video for part two. That's all for this one. Bye for now.